Hello everyone I hope everyone is doing great so if you want to know like what is the interview process at DX Technologies or if you want to know like what kind of interview questions that are being asked for a Java developer at DX Technologies then this video is for you so before getting into the interview firstly uh, like interview process or interview questions firstly I would like to discuss about like how I got shortlisted so one day I got a call from one of the leading recruiting consultancy and there where we there we had a discussion about the like what kind of required skills they were looking out for so as i luckily matched all the mandatory required skills and i was shortlisted for the interview so after getting shortlisted for the interview i was called to their location now this was on a weekend so i was called at their location where the interview process or interview happened so coming to the interview process here so there were two technical rounds and followed by manager round and a HR round and coming to the HR round it was a telephonic round so before getting into the interview questions that I have encountered in the interview I would like to give a quick introduction of ourselves like who are we and what we do so we are basically a bunch of software engineers who are attending the interviews with different MNCs and sharing our interview experiences through these videos. Uh, if you have, a, if you are watching, if you are on our channel for the first time, you can visit our channel and you can see there are already we have shared a huge number of interview experiences. And I hope uh, you will, that that definitely helps one. So if you haven't subscribed us, uh, please do subscribe to catch all the updates because there are n number of videos that are in queue uh, to be honest we are not getting time to create a video so that is the reason we are delaying and this videos what you are watching now this interview happened in jan but uh, like jan or feb in the first week of and the last week of jan or in the first week of feb and you see i am creating the video in the june so th that much uh, gap is there because because of some time constraints so uh, if you think I hope I wish like this video should be helpful for you so firstly I would like to discuss about the core Java interview questions here so so the first question which I have encountered here is like can you describe the baseline architecture of your recent application so I has I have worked in a number of projects so the first question was uh, like to explain the architecture of my recent project that I am currently working on so I have a, I have prepared for this question to be honest like in different uh, qu uh, different uh, interviews I have already encountered this and I have I know like what kind of counter questions are going to come up and I was even prepared for that as well so always be so all, I, I would suggest always talk about those components only on which you are having strong grip like you can uh, encounter the questions cross questions when you are trying to explain the architecture because if you are explaining the architecture there are hundred percent chances that you will get cross question from the interviewer so be prepared for that as well so coming to the next question explain different ways to create a thread in Java so this can be done in three ways you can see that on the screen like by extending the thread class or by implementing the runnable interface or by implementing the callable interface with the concurrent executor framework to pull the threads so these are the three ways I know and I have explained in, in the same the three ways only if there are any other ways please mention do comment in the comment section so this was about the first question then coming to the next question what is the difference between executor dot submit and executor dot execute method so basically uh, like I know only few differences and there are only few differences so here how I have answered it the submit can accept both runnable and callable task but execute method can only accept runnable task so first difference is this then the second coming to the second difference the submit method is declared in executor service interface while execute method is declared in executor interface so this is the second inter the difference coming to the third difference the return type of submit method is a future object but the return type of execute method is a void so these were the differences that I know and I have explained him in detail like I have explained him the same in the interview so coming to the next question uh, what design patterns that does the executor framework use so I was not much uh, aware of 
this but i know in wait like it use something called command pattern so i have answered the same thing like a executive frame interface is command pattern implementing executor is like obeying a command so the same thing i have said the next question was again from the threads concept like what is the difference between yield and sleep and what is the difference between the method sleep and wait so coming to the sleep method we specify milliseconds and nanoseconds as an argument according to like oracle docs or it is what how it runs and coming to the yield method it temporarily pass the current executing thread to give a chance to the remaining waiting threads of the same priority to execute and note if there are there is no waiting thread or all the waiting threads of low priority then the current thread will continue to ex its execution next question does all properties of immutable objects need to be final in java to be honest we don't need uh, like it is not a mandatory thing to have all the properties as final uh, in while creating the immutable class just we we should not uh, keep we should keep in mind that there are no setter methods that we are providing explicitly to modify the or change the state of the object so the next question is how does substring inside string works so i have also came up with an answer to be honest this was the first time uh, i have encountered this question i was not prepared for this question i know how substrings work like it breaks the string into small bits and pieces by passing few arguments but uh, when the interviewer asked me to explain in detail like in how in, in like what all changes came up after 1.7 and how it used to behave till 1.7 and how it is behaving after 1.7 so that that uh, actually locked me because i was not aware i haven't prepared for in detail about that so i have given the answer as well hold for a second and you can go through it uh, or if you want i can also go through it so substring creates a new object out of string source string by taking a portion of a original string so this is the common generic answer that we all give this question was mainly asked to see if the developer is familiar with the risk of memory leak which substring can create so until java 1.7 substrings hold the reference of the original character array which means even a substring of 5 character long can prevent 1 gb character array from garbage collections by holding a strong reference so this was how it used to behave then this issue was fixed in 1.7 now that doesn't happen so have a look on this question in detail so next was a coding question like can you write a critical section code of a single turn like when i am actually he asked me to write a critical section of code when we are creating a single turn class so that was the question so i was well prepared for this and i have created basically he was looking out for double checking the, the check we do double check and where exactly we use synchronized keyword here next question is how do you handle error condition while writing a stored procedure or accessing stored procedure from java so basically when we call a stored procedure it will execute in database server so if there is any exception occurs it can be handled handled in uh, stored proc exception block in the exception block or if at all the stored proc itself fails it throws an sql exception which we need to handle using try catch block so this was the answer i have given him next question was from collections so how does equals and hash code method comes into picture during the get operation of hash map like how internally so it it indirectly refers like how internally the hash map works here again but just the framing of the question is different here the next question is what is the difference between creating string as a new like new oper using new operator and as a literal so i have explained in detail like what actually happens when we create the string in two ways like i explained in uh, him de in detail about the string constant pool about the heat uh, about the object that get created on string constant pool and about the object that get created on the heap so he was pretty much impressed with the answer coming to the next question give the simplest way to find out the time a method takes for execution without using any profiling tool so best thing is uh just uh, capture the time when the at the first line and at the last line of the method 
and uh, print the difference between those two times it will give the time taken by the method execution the same thing I have mentioned below also coming to the next question what is the difference between now oh, this is already covered so what is the difference between final finalize and finally so final is a keyword most of you might be knowing this to be honest like final can't be inherited final method can't be overridden and final variables value can't be changed so coming to finally is used to play same important code it will be executed whether the exception is handled or not so usually try catch and finally block will come and finalize is used to perform the cleanup processing just before an object is garbage collected then the question was on comparator and comparable like what are the differences between comparator and comparable in interface and in which scenarios i will use what and then even asked me to write a code to sort an employee object using comparator and comparable as well using both the interfaces then asked me to explain some best practice practices you would apply while using collections in java so i have explained him few and if you want to comment out some good uh, practices that we need to follow feel free to comment in the comment section as well next question how do you test a method for a for an exception using j unit so we can uh, test it it is a very uh, i would say common thing testing a exception scenario so i have explained him the same like how can we uh, test a method whether it is throwing the exception in the right uh, way or not so these were the questions that were asked me in, in both my technical round one and technical round two uh, then coming uh, in the next slides i will be explaining the spring spring boot and web services interview questions so coming to the first questions from the spring what are beans in spring and explain bean creation process so explain him like what what all steps that are included in bean creation and like beans are the backbone of spring so then the question was that what are the roles of an inversion of control container or ioc control container so explain him in all the things what all i got to know like what all i remember at that time next was a it this was the easy question to be honest so uh, can you differentiate between the direct component repository service and controller like in which scenario in uh, like how how you will evaluate with that which uh, annotation is used on which class so explain him the same coming to the next question list out all the new features available in spring framework 4.0 and spring framework 5.0 so to be honest i was not aware of much of the new features that are in spring 5.0 and i said the same thing as we use spring 4 only yet so i have explained in the features that are of that came up in spring 4.0 how can i enable auto reload of my application in spring boot without stopping like basically the question was related to spring dev tools there is one dependency called dev tools and uh, through by having the dev tools dependency we can restart the server on each and every change coming to the next question what happens in background when a spring boot application is run as java application when we right click on the main class and run it as a java application what happens in the background so this was the question so explain him in detail way like how what happens from where the execution starts what all annotations comes into picture or well, like uh, when the classes gets loaded and entire thing i have explained him in de detail so he was really very much impressed with this as well to be honest next question is how do you we how do you connect to a external database like mysql or oracle so this is very easy to be honest uh, to connect if you are having good hands on experience on creating on working spring boot ex, uh, spring boot uh, these are all our below average interview questions to be honest like this is very simple so you can google it also the next question is about the security like how is spring security implemented in spring boot application so to be honest uh, i have a very little knowledge on spring boot security because in our my current application uh, we use some other security security thing so i have explained him the same like uh, 
to be honest i don't know about the exact uh, exact things that happens in spring security but if you want to explain me like how security we are providing in our application i would like to proceed on that so he, even he agreed on to that so he asked then change the question like how we are implementing security in our application so i've explained him in detail about that as well then the question was why would you opt for and mic for micro services architecture uh, like what all benefits i have explained him like what all benefits we are getting when we opt out for microservices architecture and at the same time also explain him the challenges that we face if we opt out for microservice architecture so the next question was why do we why do we need containers for microservices to be honest i didn't get the question itself exactly so i said to run the con like we need containers for any project what about, it's not about microservices itself for any project we need container so i to be honest i was not up to the mark when i was answering this question then the next question was what are the ways to access restful microservices so explain him in detail about the different ways that are available to access the microservices the next question was a basic thing like what is dry in microservice architecture so explain him in detail so these were the questions that were asked to me in like from the concept of spring spring boot and microservices like from the both the rounds so technical round 1 and technical round 2 then the next section i'll be explaining you like the manager round interview questions so coming to the first question from the manager round apart from coding what all other things you do so explain him in detail like apart from coding what all i am doing like conducting interviews uh, peer reviewing the code and there are n number of things that uh, i do i have explained him the same what motivates you at work so explain him so to be honest money motivates everybody uh, we can't say that answer but i said something like uh, working on new technologies implementing new things in using new technologies and all such kind of answer i have given next question what is the most challenging thing you have faced as a developer so to keep it on a lighter note testers are the most challenging things i have ever faced as a developer what all agile ceremonies you attend so i listed out all the ceremonies or you call in a simple way meetings that are uh, that i attend as a as we follow agile next thing is how long will you work with us so this is one of the tactic like what i can say one of the most uh, uh, tricky questions to answer so i said as long as i feel challenging and as long as i am getting good opportunities here like to work on new technologies i am going to work here then those were the questions that flow away from the manager on the next slide i will be sharing you the hr interview questions so basically this was a telephonic round and it was a close to 15 minutes talk only so for the first question was why are you looking out for a change so stated the reason of uh, my change then the question was do you have any location constraints so i said no so the next question was how much salary are you expecting so said one figure like i said 15 lakhs per annum to be honest but uh, hr didn't accept it with that number and they had some negotiation then they we had some negotiation there so finally i have settled up for one amount which i'll be sharing you in the feedback section so these were the questions that were asked me as part of my interview experience with dxc so i hope this video helps you and um, so coming to the feedback of the interview so i would say it was a good interview overall positive interview i would say so because everything was on uh, on time like everything was well scheduled coming to the salary that was so coming to the salary which was i discussing so i was offered 14 lakhs per annum and it was a good amount to be honest and coming to the experience level it is for 6.3 years of experience guy so with this i would like to conclude the video so i hope this video helped you and please do subscribe share it or like comment provide us the feedback about the interview uh, and thank you for watching the interview so with this i would like to stop the recording as well